Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. Today, I want to go ahead and give you guys some like 10 tips for Righteous Fire. Normally, I don't try to make these videos because they're kind of like clickbait, like, you know, top 10 and etc. But I feel Righteous Fire kind of warrants a video like this because I see so many new players um, kind of stumbling upon things or like finding walls or hitting walls and just generally being confused. Um, so this video is mainly just to kind of like clear up, maybe help help you guys um, just clear up some information about Righteous Fire and maybe why I do some of the things. I would also like to state that this is more geared towards a Inquisitor Righteous Fire video than anything else, but there are some general tips. So number one is going to be a Pious Path explanation for tip one. So in my guide, I explain that once you hit level 55 and you finish your Cruel Lab and you ascend, when you ascend and you acquire Pious Path, you are effectively ready to run Righteous Fire. Question is, is why? Well, um, with this character, I'm just going to kind of show you guys a little example here. So my maximum fire res is currently 85% out of 95. So anything that possibly gives me fire res, I am going to just take off right now. Perfect. Um, yeah, I think honestly, most of my res is like from the tree at the moment. So I have 52% fire res standing still with my energy shield not even going down. I'll take off my replica soul tether and now my ES goes down, but you can see my life is still fine. Um, that was weird. So essentially right now, um, as you can see, my life regen is 1,500 and my energy shield is 1,500. But this is only when you're standing on consecrated ground. To make sure you're standing on consecrated ground, what you're gonna do is you're basically gonna shield charge every like four seconds or so and you don't have to shield charge you could use like frost blink you could use like your fire trap you could basically do anything that's going to cause your character to stand still for like a server tick so 0.01 seconds as long as you are doing this your consecrated ground will always be up if it falls off take a look at my regeneration it goes from 1700 to 1000 and then i lose 1700 energy shield so it's very important to make sure you are properly keeping up your pious path. You can see my life regen with 52% fire res, right? So that's how that's how crazy pious path is. All right, so moving on to the next one is going to be life tap swift affliction combo. So a lot of people, what they do is they follow my links in POB, which good for you, you should. And they notice that efficacy does more damage than life tap. So they use... Awakened Ink AoE, Swift Affliction, Righteous Fire, Lighter, and then they use Efficacy. The problem with Efficacy is there's like this hidden thing in Path of Exile where you can add a secret duration tag to gems, even if their Vol counterpart has a duration, like Vol Righteous Fire. I think actually it's because of Vol Righteous Fire you're allowed to do this. So if I were to, say, remove the Life Tap gem from here, you'll notice this little green R will go away. And that's because you are killing the duration tag, thus not being able to benefit from Swift Affliction. I know it kind of doesn't really make sense. You kind of just have to believe me on this one. There is another gem you can use to simulate this experience, which is what we would run in the past, <clears throat> which is Arcane Surge. But Arcane Surge is just strictly worse because you, uh, you don't get the 19% more damage. Now, speaking of the 19% more damage, you don't actually get life tap damage for your skill unless you are proccing the life tap buff. Now, Righteous Fire does not have to proc life tap. You can have life tap procced from anywhere. This leads to why we run level one life taps on things like our Frost Blink. So you can see here when I Frost Blink, I get life tap. And you can see my damage goes up to 619k and then it falls off to 519k. So every time I shield charge as well, I get the life tap buff and any skill that has life tap will receive its bonus damage and again a very important thing just because a level one life tap is is proccing the buff doesn't mean we gain the damage of a level one life tap you gain the damage of the life tap that's in your gear so this level one life tap gives me the life tap buff but i get the life tap buff as if it's level 20. all right moving on to the next one uh, flask removing righteous fire this one is mainly for maven 
Um, when you do the Maven encounter, there are these beams that are really annoying in the last phase. And if you're not super good at memory games and you get distracted easily, then you're basically like me. And what happens is you will try to do the memory game and you'll accidentally shield charge through a beam. And when you shield charge through a beam, your uh, righteous fire starts killing you. To prevent that from happening, simply roll a flask with urchin and remove your RF. And that way, you don't die to degen. And then, you know, when the debuff is off, you can just go run it again. Um, for an easy way to craft the urchin flask, if you get a prefix on your flask, um, so a prefix would basically just be like, here would be increased charge recovery, reduced effect. Then you can come over to bestiary and you can actually put your flask here and uh hope i don't fuck this up is it down here it's oh here we go it's somewhere down here on your flask you can add urchin and bam you have a remove rf flask okay uh next one is going to talk about maven boots specifically so this one is not really like a not really like a beginner tip but more of like some insight as to why righteous fire is so much stronger this league than any other league basically that we've played so these boots here in softcore they run for like five chaos they cost literally nothing in hardcore they're much more expensive uh just to do a quick price check they are there yeah like horsey they, they cost nothing although i don't know why it shows none are listed that's kind of weird i'm not sure about that um doesn't really matter though so these boots basically when you walk have time to within well. righteous fire range enemies become scorched so when they're scorched and they die they explode with this this burning right here that burning from a white mob almost insta killed a rare so you could just imagine when a rare monster explodes how much damage it does to enemies surrounding right then that that burn that you applied from your boots which is 35 percent chance when you skill a scorched enemy to burn each surrounding enemy for four seconds dealing eight percent of the enemy's max life is fire because it's tagged as fire it scales with your damage over time multi your fire damage over time multi your damage over time your fire damage your increased damage your elemental damage possibly your area damage but that one i'm not sure on um then it also scales off your minus fire res so like your exposure your cover in ash um your flammability your actual scorch from the boots so that's why the maven boots are such an awesome pick they basically give you the clear speed that you've always kind of wanted on righteous fire without feeling like you're pigeonholed into going explodey setup so i really like that okay next up is uh number five do not level up your frost blink uh, a lot of players are rolling over elemental reflect maps because what happens is you'll play R R rf and you're you know charging into packs and you frost blink into the middle of a pack and all of a sudden you lose like 5,000 life and you're like holy shit what just happened and you think chaos damage hit you or something or you think your righteous fire is reflecting or your fire trap is reflecting that is not the case it's just because you're leveling up frost blink and frost blink already hits really hard and because you're leveling it up it's getting a massive base damage multiplier that's getting scaled by your righteous fire because remember your rf also gives um 41 percent more spell damage so kind of like pain attunement but stronger and you're not on low life so that's kind of like one big tip um number six map mods to avoid so there's only three map mods that i avoid and you guys can just avoid two of them so the number one is going to be and i'm not sure if i have examples here we go minus maximum player resistance it's that first line right there if you see it so I can run this just fine. As you guys saw, I was running around with 50 fire res and I was doing just fine. But this is an extremely rippy map mod in terms of like end game damage spikes. I would rate minus max as one of the like pop killers in most maps because you roll minus max and then you have monsters having uh, like 128% extra damage. And now with the new altars, there's like even more crazy stuff that happens during maps. So I personally skip this just because you know i'm almost level 100 i'm 99 at 73 percent i just don't like dying for no reason the next one i roll over is if you read the last line on this map players have 60 percent less recovery rate of life and energy shield this is worse than minus max in terms of your recovery this completely botches your life regeneration essentially uh, which affects your energy shield regeneration 
Uh, so I do not like this map mod at all. The last one is no regeneration. No regeneration is also a big killer. Uh, those are the three map mods I don't run. I run everything else. And when I'm level 100, I'll probably run minus max because it won't really matter at that point. Um, literally anything else I can run. I run GMP double damage mods. Not a problem. As long as my sustain is normal like it is, then I'm pretty happy with my character. Okay. Um, number seven, why we don't run purity of fire anymore. So in the past, there was a lot less sources of life regen to acquire in the game. Uh, for example, we did not have the affix like 17% life regeneration rate. We could not get huge, outrageous numbers of flat life regen. Uh, and life regen was just a meme at that point when you, when you would like get it on gear. We didn't have nodes like Hardy that also scale your life regeneration rate. So back in the day, you would run Purity of Fire to help you achieve 90% max fire res because the higher your fire res, your maximum fire res, the less damage you're taking from your RF, thus kind of boosting your net regeneration. Now you can kind of brute force your regeneration and max fire res is kind of something extra on top, but you don't really need to go for it, right? You'll have a little bit from the tree naturally, but you don't need to like go all the way for it. So because of that, we run Purity of Elements uh, Purity of Elements gives us the old Consecrated Ground from Inquisitor, which was full ailment immunity. So Purity of Elements gives us the full ailment immunity. And remember that by running Purity of Elements, a lot of people look at this as like, oh, well, you know, can't you just get resistance and ailment reduction on your gear? Sure, you could, but that's giving up life regen or damage in some spots, depending on where you're trying to get it. Uh, so you can always look at resistance as a fluff stat because if you don't need to get resistance in a slot, then you can get something else in that slot. So for example, my gloves only have chaos res. Instead of having a resistance roll, they have life regen and dexterity, right? That would normally have to be filled up with uh, other things like fire res or cold res. Um, same thing with death's rush. Death's rush is such a cheap unique. I am literally level 99 still using death's rush. It's not an amazing unique, but it's just good. It gives you Onslaught, it gives you Chaos Res, it gives you Life, it gives you Armor. I would need to have another Resist Ring in this slot, right? Which would push me to another source of Onslaught. That's for another video, though. That doesn't really matter. Okay, uh, next up, I accidentally deleted number 7, so I think number 7 is what we just went over. Uh, number 8, Fire Trap has insane damage. It's your new single target. So before, you would run Scorching Ray. Uh, you would run Scorching Ray until you get Master of Fire. Then when you get Master of Fire, you have a much more reliable source of exposure. So you would switch this Elemental Mastery right here. Oh, look at that. Smile with the T1. Thanks, dude. You would switch it with this right here. Not switch it, but change this. To exposure you inflict applies at least minus 18. So that means your Master of Fire turns from 10 to an 18% exposure. And you don't really need any other source of exposure whatsoever. Um, remember, exposure can go higher, but like when you're using Scorching Ray, which gives you the minus 25 exposure, because we don't have a lot of cast speed, you literally have to like base tank your target to actually achieve your exposure, which is why I don't like running it late game because standing still is bad. So Fire Trap, um, if you were to just like look at my tooltip, I have a burning ground tooltip of 1.1 million damage. That's before having an awakened burn damage. So Fire Trap just hits really hard. Not the actual hit, but the like literal burning ground that's on the floor here just absolutely demolishes targets. Um, so for that, I'm currently running Fire Trap, Burn Damage, con Awakened Control Destruction, Awakened Deli Focus, Life Tap, and Trap in Mine. You can run Swift Affliction, but my problem with Swift Affliction is it was pulling the burning ground duration to like 1.5 seconds. And that just felt a little short for me uh, 2.2 feels much better. Okay, next up is going to be, um, here's one that, that happens a lot on the stream. So, Cover and Ash, Scorch, Flammability, and Exposure. Those are all different sources of, of basically, like, things you can apply to a monster to ramp up your damage, right? So, a lot of people think that they don't stack together. Uh, they all stack. So, let's use an example. Cover and Ash can come from Infernal Cry. Um, Infernal Cry says cover enemies in Ash, causing 3% increased fire damage taken per 5 power up to 20%. You can also get Cover and Ash from an, uh, 
a mastery point like here. This stacks with Scorch. Scorch as is just an ailment, so it has nothing to do with those. And if you guys were watching earlier, you'll know what the boots do. The boots are applying Scorch. So if I look at like this enemy over here, they have minus 16 res from Scorch. Also, you can't see it, but Master of Fire is also applying because they are nearby me. So they have an additional minus 18 fire res from Master of Fire. Furthermore, they also have, this one's not on there, they take 16% increased from Augury, and when you use your Frost Blink, you will apply flammability to all of them, which further pulls down their fire resistance, right? All of those stack together, and they really do help you out. So much damage. Uh, and then this leads me into kind of like my last one, which is why Frost Blink over Flame Dash? So in the past, I always used Flame Dash. I never even thought about using Frost Blink. In this league, I just wanted to try Frost Blink. So I tried it, and I really like it. And I'm going to explain to you sort of why I like it. So when I am running through, right, when I Frost Blink on a target, first off, if you hit enough mobs slash you hit a unique mob, you get insane cooldown recovery on your Frost Blink. This is like a level one Frost Blink, right? It's not high level at all. Um, I am using a Divergent Frost... Is it Divergent? Yeah, so Divergent Frost Blink gives 40% cooldown recovery rate for each rare or unique enemy in an area. And since I'm running very thick and dense maps, that's just always the case, right? It's always there. But furthermore, if you look at this AoE, Frost Blink applies your person hit really well, right? So that like, all of those targets just got hit by flammability. And it also applies a chilled ground. Not a big deal, but you know, 12% chill. That's that's really not that bad, right? It's just extra on top. Uh, and the last one is, remember that enemies who are on your consecrated ground take 15% increased damage. So it's not a bad idea to initiate by frost blinking on top of the target and then moving away slightly to make sure that you kind of keep them on that consecrated ground. All right, that's pretty much about it. Uh, just kind of like one little bonus thing that a lot of people forget. Do not forget that when you are playing my Inquisitor Righteous Fire build, uh, if you read this node, you have 50% reduced effective curses if you're on Conk Ground. And this increases that by 50%. So you are 75% curse resistant. If you take the mastery here or here, you can get another 20% reduced effective curses, which puts you at 95% curse resist, which basically makes you immune to curses. Um, you can also, instead of doing the mastery, you can spend a point to go here and grab Asylum Wheel. Um, this will give you Chaos Resist full curse immunity, and then you don't have to spend a mastery point here. And we are also stun immune from Unwavering Stance, fully ailment immune from Purity of Elements. So it's a very smooth character. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. If this helped you guys out, please feel free to drop something in the comments below to let me know. I pretty much pull all my information from you guys based off of what I notice you guys are struggling on when you come and talk to me on my live stream. So that's pretty much about it. Remember, you guys can catch me streaming live every day about Sundays at twitch.tv slash pox. See you guys all later. Take care, everybody.